Hey guys, it's Bethany, your crafty BFF, and today I am on with a requested little tutorial. Now, this may be seem very easy, you know, for some people, and um, maybe a little more difficult for other people. Um, and I am sure, while I haven't checked, I am sure there are lots of videos out there just like this. Um like tutorial showing you how to make a Polaroid shaker. Um, my dear friend Anne, hi Anne, um, just uh, messaged me and asked me to do a tutorial showing how to make a shaker from a Polaroid frame die. And um, I said, well, you know, there's other, I'm sh and I was thinking, well, there's other tutorials out there. But she said, but I ask, I'm asking you because you explain things so well. And she said she's a visual learner. So here we go. We are going to make um, two little Polaroid frame shakers here today. Um, um, this video is just for Anne and anybody else who um, might need some help figuring it out. So, I have these two different Polaroid frame dies. I have this one here, and this is all it comes with. It's just the frame. There is no layering piece. Um, you know, there is no backing piece. Like, with this one, it has the frame piece, and it has the uh, matching layering piece for the back. So let's start with this one because this one's way easier than um, this one. So I'm going to go over how I use these dies and what I cut each one of them out to make a shaker. Now I just did a video like this the other day making a different type of shaker. But um, I'll go over all of this again. So... Okay. Sorry, Reagan interrupted me. She's going to her friend's house. <laughs> um, okay, so with this die, the layering piece is what I'm going to call it. I cut a piece of 110 pound cardstock because I like a nice sturdy embellishment. You should at least cut it out of 65 pound cardstock if you don't have the 110. So uh, a plain piece of cardstock for the back. Then you want to cut this this die out of a the pattern paper that you want for your background and and with this die you're going to cut your acetate out because it's the solid shape right so probably hard to see but that is the same just cut out of my acetate um then with the frame die see this this is the frame die because it has two cutting edges on it. It has the outside cutting edge and it has the inside cutting edge. So it will cut the square out of the middle. So with this die, you're going to cut 110 pound cardstock. I, I like, like I said, I like a, a nice sturdy embellishment. So the frame you cut out of, and like I said, if you don't have the 110, at least do a, um, just cut it out of a 65 pound plain white cardstock. Then you're going to cut out your foam. So this is the five millimeter foam that I get from Hobby Lobby. Um, so I cut my frame piece out in that. And then I also cut it out in this gold foil because this is what I want my shaker to look like. It's going to have the gold foil frame on top. And then it's going to have the um, that pink gingham paper in the background. Okay. So the first thing you do is take your top layering piece, the one that you want to show um, when you put it together. In my case, it's the gold foil, but you can do any kind of in, any solid color cardstock, any pattern paper, specialty paper, whatever you want. So you're, you're going to add your glue here to the back of your frame. I dropped it. Sorry. <laughs> And when I um, am making a shaker, I add a thin but continuous line of 
wet adhesive all the way around the frame. You don't want a lot, you just want a thin, continuous line all the way around. This is so that no sequins can, or shaker mix can escape from your shaker. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more down here on this, um, what is the bottom of the Polaroid frame. And I am going to... Um, Glue, I'm going to glue this to my acetate, but I'm not going to do it right away. I'm going to let my glue start to get tacky. Um, if it's super wet, when you go to glue it to your acetate, it's going to smear on your acetate and make it all gross. And then you got to try to get the glue off of the acetate. So I like to wait um, and let it get like, like I said, let that glue start to set and get tacky, and then you can glue it to your acetate piece. So here's my acetate piece. While that is getting tacky, you can, like, mess with your acetate to try to get the dust and stuff off of it, because, you know, acetate is just a dust magnet, so, um... So now my glue is starting to get tacky, so I'm going to um, just place my acetate down, line it up the best I can with the frame, the top layering frame piece here. And I'm just going to be real careful and go around and just kind of tap it to make sure that, to help the acetate stick to the cardstock. Now we're going to set this to the side and let this dry completely. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we are going to glue our pattern paper to our 110 pound cardstock um, solid, solid piece for our backing. So I'm just going to glue this on here. Line it up, press it down, grab this bone folder real quick. Okay, so there's that. And now we are going to glue our foam piece to the uh, pattern paper plus the 110 pound cardstock layer that are glued together now. We're going to glue our frame our foam frame to this uh, solid piece right here. And so this is the back. I'm going to add my glue here on the bottom. And then once again, I'm just going to add a thin continuous line all the way around the frame. Because you don't want your acid or your, your little shaker mix to escape through any little areas that might not have glue right so uh, just a thin continuous line like so and we're just i'm gonna let this start to get tacky before i put it down because i don't want any glue smudges on my pattern paper either so I'm just gonna rub this around on that foam because it does take because the foam isn't paper you know it it does take a little longer for the glue to start setting to get tacky so I'm just spreading it out a little thinner so that it will <laughs> start to get tacky a little faster just for the sake of the video but yeah so let your glue start to get tacky and then line this up the best you can. With your solid piece here. I said this in my last little shaker tutorial video. The foam is so finicky. Shakers never come out 
completely perfect, okay? So don't stress about it not being completely perfect. Just be as careful as you can when you're remo when you're um playing with your foam not to stretch it out. Because when you stretch it out, that's when you start to get in trouble with it not fitting the shape that it's supposed to fit. There we go. I'm going to set um something heavy on top of here to help that start to stick. I'm going to get my sequins mixed because I totally forgot to get it. <clears throat> That's not going to be enough. Let's see. Hmm. Not Christmas ones. We'll just do this one. We had to kill some time anyway, so <laughs> I found my sequence mix here. And while this gets completely, well, um, I'm not going to add my sequins until that is completely dry. So wait out, I would say at least a few minutes to make sure that glue is nice and dry. Uh oh. I forgot. I also forgot to get my powder tool. And I don't see it anywhere. I just cleaned off my desk. And I don't see my powder tool anywhere. Oh no. Okay, well, I guess we're not going to use it today. But if you have a powder tool, I highly suggest that you. Use it and rub the little brush all the way around on the inside of your foam frame. That will help reduce the static within the shaker. Because foam creates a lot of static and sequins has a lot of static with it as well. And what can if you don't use the powder tool, what can happen is that the sequins will all like statically cling to the acetate. So... I'm going to get my little spoon here, and I'm just going to add, this is a tiny shaker, so you don't need much, but I'm just going to add about like that, just one little scoop, and then I'm going to hold this down on both sides while I start to add my glue, because you want, and you want to be really careful not to accidentally knock some of the sequins out or onto the glue, so... I try to be real careful and hold it down on, on two different sides so that I don't accidentally spill it. And once again, I'm adding a thin continuous line of glue all the way around. And then adding some glue down here to the bottom of the Polaroid frame. Once again, I'm going to let this glue start to get tacky before I try to attach this piece to it. So this is our acetate that now is glued to the gold foil layer. Oh no, wait, I forgot this. Okay, so before you add the piece with your acetate, Add, we remember we cut out this frame in 110 pound cardstock as well. So I glue this this piece to the top of my foam. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. <laughs> and the reason that I cut this frame out in 110 pound cardstock um, and layer it on top of the foam is because it creates an extra layer between the acetate and the foam. If you try to, you, now it can be done. You can glue acetate to foam. However, they don't like to stick together and it takes a really long time for it to dry. When you, when So if I didn't have this 110 pound layer, I would be gluing my acetate directly to my foam and 
it they just don't like each other so by cutting that little extra frame piece in the solid cardstock it just helps um so your acetate and foam aren't um making direct contact if that makes sense and it gives you just a little bit more thickness on your shaker to add this piece but like i said it for me it's more convenient and it goes faster to cut this extra piece um out instead of trying to let the acetate and the foam stick together because they don't like each other so here we go i added yet another thin continuous line of glue all the way around my frame and before i glue my acetate and top layer piece down here i'm gonna let that glue start to set and get tacky like i explained before if you add the acetate while the glue is still really super wet it will um smudge your acetate and then you'll have like dried glue marks all over your acetate and you don't want that you want the acetate to to be as clear as possible it, it never it, it's and listen this is another thing the acetate is never perfect there's usually there's always a smudge or a smear or something <laughs> and there's you just got to go with the flow just try to minimize it the best you can by letting that glue get tacky before you add it on okay so i think i've talked enough and i'm just going to very carefully line this up and press down i'm going to set something heavy on top of here and scoot this to the side to let it dry and we will start to work on this one Like I said, this Polaroid frame die only comes with the frame piece. It does not have this second backing piece. So that means that you have to fussy cut your 110 pound cardstock layer, your pattern paper layer, and your acetate. So, but the plus side is that a a polaroid shaker frame is a perfect um you know straight edge shape so it's not like you have to like be real intricate and fussy cut around a bunch of little curves and stuff it, it's pretty easy so i took the liberty of cutting out my three frame pieces i cut it up the frame out in white 110 pound cardstock I cut it out in this gold foil. This is going to be my top layering piece. This is what everyone's going to see. And I cut uh, the frame from my 5 millimeter foam from Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> now on camera, we are going to cut our backing pieces. I uh, Sorry about the tape residue there on my, on my <laughs> frame. Um... So, like I said, you have you you need three layers um, of a solid this shape, but solid to cover the whole area. So, what I have found is that it's easier to cut your um, 110 pound cardstock and your pattern paper at the same time. So, what I'm going to do is cut this down to be just a little bigger than than this um die is so i'm gonna just cut myself a piece like this and then i'm gonna take a scrap of my 110 pound cardstock and i'm gonna glue this pattern paper to the 110 pound cardstock and this is so that when you fussy cut um, your layering piece, 
you're get you're making sure that your um 110 pound cardstock and your pattern paper are exactly the same so you don't have to cut them separately if you just glue them together you can just cut it out once and be done so I'm going to take the metal cutting die and I'm going to start try to get it straight anyways and I'm going to start fussy cutting around uh oh it moved on me And last but not least, we're going to do this side. It doesn't have perfect, be, have to be perfect because nobody's going to see your messy cut lines, okay? Once we add the frame to it, we're going to fussy cut any leftover edges, okay? So, um, it, oh, and we got, we have to fussy tape fussy cut or acetate piece as well so i'm gonna get my favorite acetate this is the brand i don't know how to pronounce it but i pick it up on amazon it's the four millimeter i will have this linked in the description box down below and fyi i am now an amazon like partner so if you purchase if you use my link and purchase this acetate um, I will get a small commission, so I just want to be completely transparent about that. So, um, but if you do purchase it through my um, link, it I promise the money will be funded right back into my channel, and I can, um, it, it's just going to help my channel. You know what I'm saying? That's why I signed up, because it'll help my channel. Okay, so here is my like little scrap piece of acetate. Well, it's actually a big scrap of acetate. <laughs> and what I'm going to do now is do the same thing I did with that powder and paper and cardstock layer. I'm just going to cut myself a piece out that is a little bigger than the actual frame here. And this time I'm using the frame. I'm not using the metal die. This time I'm using the actual frame. Right? So, cut yourself a piece of acetate that's just a little bigger than the frame. And then you're going to add your glue to the back of the frame. The top layering piece of the frame, I should say. So, in my case, it's the gold foil. You can use your do your... Um, top layer and whatever you want it to be so once again we added a thin glue a thin continuous glue line all the way around the frame and we're gonna start to let this get tacky um, before we glue it to the acetate in fact while that is getting tacky you can go ahead and glue your 110 pound frame piece to your uh, foam frame piece. Thin continuous line all the way around the frame. Just don't add too much glue so it do so it doesn't smudge. Because you want you want to try because it the acetate's gonna get something on it no matter what you do, but you know just try your best to prevent that from happening <laughs> as much as possible. I always tell myself, you know, if I if there's a smudge I can't get off or uh, some glue that's on the inside of the frame that I can't quite get like make make it come off. I'm like, well, 
good thing I'm going to decorate it, and then, then I just plan to decorate it so that it covers up that smudged part of the acetate, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, that was just a little side note. So now our 110 pound cardstock frame is glued to our five millimeter foam frame and I'm going to set my little label maker here on top of it just so that that those two pieces can start to bond together. Now your glue should be getting tacky and we're going to glue it this directly to the acetate. I hope you can see you should be able to see because of the glare from the acetate and I'm just um very carefully pressing down all the way around to make sure I have a good stick. And then once that dries, we're just going to once again fussy cut around this frame piece. It's pretty simple because it's just straight lines. Cut it off. And then, yeah, just get that cut as close to the frame as you can. So there's not, look, this, there's a little piece hanging over this edge right here. So I'm going to snip that off without cutting my frame. Good Lord, don't cut your frame. <laughs> so there we have it. We've got our top layer glued to our acetate. We've got our 110 pound cardstock glued to our foam. And then we've got our 110 pound sturdy base glued to our pattern paper. Now we are going to glue our foam to this layer here. I get tired of saying it. I'm sure you're tired of me of hearing it. Thin, continuous line of wet adhesive all the way around the frame. And a little extra here on this part. I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit so it'll dry a little bit quicker. Sorry if you hear Maddie in the background. She is, she's going, mm. <laughs> So now we are going to, once that glue starts to get tacky, we're going to glue this foam to the pattern paper. And it should be just a tiny bit bigger than your frame is because we used the, the die to cut out to cut this out so line it up the best you can make sure all those edges are are completely touched touching so you have this and i just like press it down all the way around and then i'm gonna set something heavy on top of it and wait just a second so yeah, like I said, there's probably a thousand tutorials just like this, but because Anne asked me to do it specifically since she's a visual learner and she likes the way I explain things, I said, yeah, why not? Let's do it. I'll do it for any, I'll, I'll do it for any of my friends. So there we have it. Um, I'm just being fussy with my acetate trying to get all that dust look I just made a smudge on that you see that I'm just using my shirt to try to get it off but I doubt it's gonna come off now yeah that's not gonna come off can you see that probably not but it is smudged a little bit but yeah I just try to get as much dust off of there as I can without smudging it too bad. Now this should be nice and dry. 
then we're going to add our sequins mix. I'm going to do like one and a half scoops, maybe two. There we go. Okay, once you have your sequins in there, and you're sure that everything is dry, just like that first little Polaroid shaker we did, I'm going to hold this down on two sides, one with my finger and my thumb, and I'm going to very carefully do my thin continuous line all the way around the frame, as to not accidentally knock it. And then the sequins go flying out and then they stick to the glue and then you can't use them because then they'll stick to the inside of your shaker and <laughs> all that loveliness. So just be real careful to add your glue. Then continue line all the way around. Put some extra down here. And we're going to let that start to get tacky. I hope uh, you guys, I, th I hope this helped at least Anne, if not somebody else, <laughs> uh, somebody else out there who needed it. If not, maybe just consider it a craft with me. And we made two little Polaroid shaker frames. Um, and I talked my way through it. So I hope it's helpful. Um, if I, I, I've said this before, uh, if you guys ever have any um specific tutorial you would like me to do or a certain project you want to see make ma me make on on camera just do, don't hesitate to reach out i'll be happy to take requests and um because i do like to help as much as i can and um yeah, and, and if there's a specific die, especially if it's a KS craft die, I probably already have it. And so I can show you how how to cut it out and how to assemble it. Um, just just reach out and I'll be happy to show you. Uh, some of these dies can get really complicated and uh, be confusing. Um, this I hate having little broken pieces of sequins in my shaker, so I'm going to take this little broken yellow piece out. <laughs> I just noticed that. Okay, so while I was talking, this glue started to set up and get tacky. I'm going to very carefully line up this top piece on top of the glue. <laughs> and once again, I'm just going to very gently press down all the way around and once you have it glued it's tempting but don't do it do not shake it in for at least five minutes and i say give it a full five minutes because you want every little bit of that glue to be dry and um I, we, we all make that mistake as rookies, like we don't let the glue dry all the way, and we shake it, and then there, you get sequins stuck all the way around your frame, and that's not cute. So, do not shake it. I'm going to hold this up here because I want you to see that some of that glue did smear right here on the inside of my acetate, but it's fine. And right here down in this corner. But it's fine. I will... Um, I'm going to embellish it and, you know, or decorate it, whatever you want to say, and, uh, it'll be perfectly covered up. And, and I'm using my, uh, Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue. It does dry clear, but it's acetate and you can still see it. Um, and I, and it takes a super long time. I'm talking like probably two or three days for it to completely dry if it smears on your acetate. So don't shake it. <laughs> don't shake it. Not I say wait a whole five minutes before you shake it. Now, 
the last little step I'm going to do is that you can see that this edge here is, is sticking out and it's not, it's not the perfect shape. So I'm just going to take my scissors and carefully trim that backing piece. Don't be careful not to cut your foam. You're just trimming any um, of the pattern paper that's hanging over. Right? You see that little bit of pink paper hanging over? I'm just trimming that off. Don't cut your foam because then you might get sequins leaking out. There's some more pink showing here. Carefully cutting. And then last but not least, I guess I'm just going to check the top here. And it looks pretty good. It looks pretty straight to me. So there you have it. There is your Polaroid shaker embellishment with that if so you can make it if your polaroid die comes with the backing piece or if it comes with just the frame now you can make either one um and i'm gonna flip this over to show you the back even though it's probably gonna the sequence is probably gonna stick there i want to show you that the back is not perfect it's like See how um, this is, you can see the little bit of foam right there. It's not going to be perfect because we fussy cut it. So it's not a big deal. Nobody's looking at the back of it anyways. They're looking at the front of it. Right? So don't worry about what the back looks like. Just make sure you, um, you have a nice even frame all the way around. And that does it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you. Other than that, have a great day, and thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you have any anything uh, you want to request for me to um, do on, on camera, uh, crafty-wise, just uh, reach out. I'll be happy to help. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.